Wow, wonderful viewers. I'm very excited to welcome you to today's special edition of your live transmission on David Bindan Live. Um, by the grace of God, we are going to be dealing with a very important subject today, which is um, the coronavirus pandemic, the advantage of the church. Coronavirus pandemic, the advantage of the church. Can we share a word of prayer? Father, we thank you because by the transmission of your word, I bring peace, not as the world gives, but peace as it is in Christ upon everyone that is connected and shall be connected all over the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow, so the coronavirus pandemic, it has been amazing since latter part of November till now when the world started having an introduction of this amazing um, organism that has sent the whole world running helter-skelter. Now, everyone so far has been seeing the issue of this pandemic from one perspective, and that is the negative perspective. Um, the perspective of lives that are passing on, the effect on the economy, the effect on um, social activities and other aspects of human living. But if you understand things from the perspective of God, you will relax and all fears will melt away from you. And so I have come tonight, I've come in this episode and in other episodes that I'll be bringing to you to let you really relax and get informed that there is nothing to be in fear about. And this is not a political speech, it's not a, a psychological encouragement, this is the truth from God's heart to you. And I want us to take a look at one event like that in the scriptures that looked totally negative on the outside and look at what the scriptures said about such an event. In Matthew chapter 2, I'm going to be reading to you from the NIV. Matthew chapter 2 from verse 16, um, the Bible says that when Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Verse 17, then, was, then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. You look at an event like this where there was a mass killing of children by Herod looking for Jesus. And the Bible says that by this happening, a scripture was fulfilled. Everyone was looking at it from the perspective of people's children are dying, people's children are dying. But the scripture said that that fulfilled the scripture. In the same way, if you sit as one who sees things from the perspective of God, you realize that for this pandemic, which could have been much... Um, which have been handled with ease, without so much fear as it is, being so outblown and causing so much fear everywhere, it is because of something. And when you look at things from the perspective of God, you can understand what it's doing. And so in the midst of this pandemic of the coronavirus, there is an advantage of what is happening in the world today to the church. And that is what I'll be sharing with you in this uh, special episode and others. I'm going to try to look at just one of the advantages. Now, the first advantage of this coronavirus pandemic to the church is that it is revealing the true state of the church. This coronavirus pandemic that is shaking the whole world is actually revealing the true state of the church. 
And what this is supposed to lead the church into is to bring the church to embrace the right message for the now. This is advantage. So the church should not just join the whole world in getting scared here and there, but to look scripturally and see what this is meant to do. And that is what I'm bringing to you as God's voice for the now. This pandemic is not totally all evil as you're thinking, but it has something the church can look at. And that is, this thing came to reveal the state of the church. What I'm saying is not to say that God made this thing to happen so that you know this. But in the midst of this, this is what it's doing to the church. Revealing the true state of the church so that the church can embrace the right message for the now. Now, the church has depended on certain things that have been taught for years. And those things were correct for the babyhood stage of the church. But as the church is growing and God expects the church to grow, those things will no more be what is needed to nourish the church to be what it should be. And that is one thing that this pandemic in the whole world is doing. Now, if you look at what's happening from Asia all the way to Europe, America, and now to Africa and everywhere, if you say you are a Christian or you are part of the church, there is a question to ask. Have you heard that anywhere, anyone seems to be looking up to the church for a solution? No way. Even in the case of the Ameri North America where they've declared a national day of prayer, what is it? It is to pray to God. It is not actually a looking up to the church. And that is the baby who stage that the church has been in. Always calling on God. Always calling on God. And yet, God has not decided in scripture that the church should always be at a stage of always calling on him. After Jesus left, if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and you read from verse 24 into verse 25, let me just see. I didn't want to give you so many scriptures in this city, but just to clarify a few things for you. In 1 Corinthians 15, if you read from verse 24, the Bible says that then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. Verse 25, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. This is a function of the church on the earth. Christ he as a person is seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven now. And the church is the instrument by which he rules on the earth. And he's supposed to rule on the earth until all opposition to the kingdom of Christ is subdued. You see, so the church was not born on the earth to remain always dependent and always calling on God to come in. But the church was born so that from the initial stages, that's correct. But the church should grow to the fullness of the stature of Christ. So that as Christ is in heaven, so will the church be. Because that is what the scripture said. If you go to 1 John, 1 John chapter 4 verse 17. He says that this is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence in the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Oh boy, how I wish the whole world understood this. He says, in this world, we are like Jesus. Is this true? Listen to this. All religious people are running helter-skelter. Those 80s are running helter-skelter. And the church is running helter-skelter. So where is the Jesus factor? So the church cannot say we are like Christ in this world. And yet this is where God wants to get the church to. And if you, are, if you have been following me, remember God has sent me as a voice to the whole world and to the body of Christ. Have been following me. In the month of April, I announced to the whole body of Christ a breaking news about God's final global move on this earth, which is expected to do two things. And one of them is to cause a global harvest of souls. And the second is to ripen the body of Christ in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to come to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is the stage where the church can say that 
we are like Jesus in this world, not in heaven. We published this news in the mirror in Ghana. We've been published, uh, sizing, we published it on Joy Prime and all our media uh, platforms. If you missed it, you can go back and get these messages. Now, this move of God is here, and the church must mature. And the church never knew that it was at the biblical stage. Look, there is one person on this earth that the, God said, you are the light of the world. God said, you are the salt of the earth. God said, you are the solution to the world. And the person has been there and gotten used to the world and never knew that he was really not functioning. That person is the church. In times like this, the church should not have been mixed up with the whole world, running when the world is running. Where is the salt? Where is the light? Can you tell me that if Jesus was here and there are 50 Jesuses, they will be running up and down like the whole world? How about 100 Apostle Pauls and 100 P uh, Apostle Peters? But the church has to come to this place according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Maybe let me just read it to you. Because we always teach based on the scriptures, we sometimes don't intend to read so many scriptures, but we end up doing that because that is where the basis of our speech is. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, it says that, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is where God wants the church to get to. And it says he gave us apostles, prophets, etc. to build the church till we get to this place. But the church has grown to a certain level and gotten stagnated and settled down for all the basic things of this world so that there's no more dichotomy between the church and the world. So all the restrictions that are measured for everybody is measured for the church, and the church cannot do anything about it. Because if they are left out, they cannot stand. So what does this tell you? It, this thing should tell the church that the church is still at the baby level. And what is the challenge? It means the message we are consuming is not causing us to grow. It means all that we are teaching about blessing, blessing, blessing is not working. We have to grow above that. All that we are teaching about protection, protection, and all that is not working. We have to grow above that. All the deliverances and things that we're teaching, we have to grow above it. And all the issues of enemies and things of such that we are teaching, we have to grow above it. The issues of give this and get this and the skewed form of prosperity, it, we have to grow above it. None of that is working now. If it was working, the church would have stood that there would have been one country in which somebody would gather and say, let's call on the church. But where is the church? The church is mixed up with the world. But that is not God's will. This thing, the church should sit back and look at and ask yourself, where is the church? If you are a Christian, this is the time to ask yourself, what is the state of the church? The church should be Jesus on the earth. But is that what we are seeing? And that tells you that what we've been feeding on, we need to upgrade in that. And if you follow the, the move, when I shared with you, God said it is the message of the new creature in Christ. It is the message of who we are, the life of God we have. Listen, the church has to now major on eternal life. The church has to major on the new creature. If you have eternal life in you, a virus will run away from you instead of running away from a virus. Do you have Mark in your Bible and chapter 16 in your Bible and verse 17 in your Bible? What did he say? These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devil, they shall speak with new tongues, and if they shall drink anything, devil they shall not hurt them. He didn't say that they shall run away from a virus. What is the state of the church? I just came today to ask you a question. What is the state of the church? What is really the church? Is the church useful to the world at all? If in the midst of the whole world suffering, the church cannot be an answer. If in the midst of the whole world running, the church is running with them. If in the midst of the darkness of the world, there's no light, where is the light? Somebody has to ask these questions. And the issue is not that God is not great. Where is the God we are calling on? I've been talking about that in the next episode. If the God we are calling on and with all the tongues and things we are doing cannot materialize in times like this, then which kind of God are we talking about? God has sent me to announce to the world 
that this thing is not as bad as you think. Listen, if you are watching me, relax. You aren't going to die. If you will hear what I'm sharing with you and receive these words as word from God's messenger, you are already protected by these words. You are preserved by these words. And I want you to relax. Of course, just do whatever the answer you do now until you get a whole message. And know that you are preserved. Look at what you can learn from this thing and begin to mature. I don't want to take much of your time on this episode. I'll come to you again, same time, tomorrow, as we look at another advantage of this coronavirus pandemic. But I want to tell you that next week, from Monday to Friday, I'll be giving you the details of this teaching in our Good Life Devotion. And the Good Life Devotion is aired on Joy Prime TV. If you are not in Ghana, you can get it on um, Star Times app. It's also aired on Light TV. Joy Prime TV is 5.30 to 6 a.m. Monday to Friday. Light TV is 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. If you're in Accra, we are on Vision 1. Uh, 93.5 megahertz, Vision 1 FM, 93.5 megahertz, 1.30 to 2 o'clock. And again, we are also on Touch FM, if you are in the Volta region. We are on Touch FM, that's 103.9 megahertz. Touch FM, 103.9 megahertz, also at 1.30 to 2 p.m. If you go all the way to OT region, we are on OT FM. 101.5 megahertz, the same 1.30 to 2 p.m. And then if you're around Techiman and Sunyani areas, we are on Ajinkwa FM, 105.9 megahertz. From next week, from Monday to Friday, I will bring you the details of what I'm sharing with you so that the body of Christ can wake up and take advantage of this situation to mature to the level where if anything should happen again, the church will be the advantage of the world. The coronavirus pandemic the advantage of the church. This is part one. I'll be coming your way in our next episode. But can I pray for you? If you have been watching me on this simple episode, I'm telling you, Christianity is not what you've been hearing and seeing for over the past 2,000 years. Christianity is receive the life of God into your spirit. We've been bringing you this promo that Christianity is not a religion. People thought it was a joke, but this is the proof. All that we had about religion cannot stand. But if you had eternal life and you majored on it, you will not be moved a bit by what is going on. Because you know what you have. If you don't have eternal life, God's plan for you is to have eternal life and become one of his children on the earth. It is easy to have eternal life now and become a child of God. Believe that Jesus made eternal life available after his death and resurrection and declare him as Lord by saying this after me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I believe that by your resurrection from the dead, you made eternal life available. I receive this life into my spirit. And I declare that I am born again by saying that Jesus is Lord. If you have done this with all your heart, you are born again. You can contact us and we'll help you to grow. Can I pray for you? Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I preserve everyone watching now and everyone that will ever watch this video from the negative effect of this pandemic. In Jesus' name. Till I meet you on the next episode, don't forget, life is good. Enjoy. Thank you.